Oh, a lot of them were commenting on on both you and I, like, put your fucking camera away, stop taking fucking pictures, swearing. People were just angry. And then this guy just came out of nowhere. And, um, yeah, I got pretty scared. Myself and Aurora here were in Westminster over the weekend reporting on the protest. Hi, yes, yeah, so I was the camera operator on Saturday. Uh, at the protest. Um, and this crowd gathered after people like Tommy Robinson had encouraged their followers to counter protest against Black Lives Matter and defend Churchill's statue and the cenotaph, although neither of them was really under threat and no one seriously suggested removing the Churchill statue, but a lot of people still turned up. Um, there was a mixture of the far right, there were some people doing Nazi salutes, Britain first, yeah. the Football Lads Alliance were there. And like I said, these people were there to ostensibly defend a statue that isn't under threat and it was already covered in protective metal sheets. And, you know, very quickly you see what they're actually there for. And that was getting drunk, attacking police and journalists, um, which probably brings us quite nicely to the start of the video. <laughs> Aurora, yeah. you, were, you were holding the camera there. Um, Explain what's happening. Right, so it was very weird because I remember you and I, we met very an hour before the gathering of it, like started and people were already drinking cans of beer at 10 a.m. Um, in the morning. And like, I knew a lot of people would be drunk, uh, but I didn't actually realize to what extent this could be dangerous for journalists. I've, I've you know, my job is my job. I'm a camera op operator, I go on the field. I film, I file back and I edit videos. But this was actually the first time since I've started my career that I actually got scared. And like, this is the moment where the adrenaline kicked in for me. And I was, I just turned around, they were all charging at the police, uh, just on Whitehall. And I just looked, I turned around and I saw all of them coming towards me. So my ultimate reaction as a camera operator was just to like press record and start recording and then this guy just came out of nowhere and um, yeah, I got pretty scared. This is when I realized as a journalist, it is dangerous for me to be there. A lot of, I, I overheard a lot of comments, you know, I remember you and I, we climbed on on, um, on a few um, places just to get a sort of an over, overview shot of the crowd. And a, a lot of them were commenting on, on both you and I, like, put your fucking camera away, stop taking fucking pictures, swearing, um, using the fingers. People were just angry. And then this guy just came out of nowhere. And, um, yeah, I got pretty scared. Late, later on in the day, there was that photographer who just in front of me who got what looked like a broken nose. I think someone had punched him in the face and that was for taking photos. Basically anyone that had a camera, you know, people were filming on their phones, but if you had a big camera, you were basically being being targeted. And I know several journalists were. Um, the crowd also did inflict some violence on itself as well. The sort of people had thrown bottles that ended up hitting, you know, other people in the crowd that they were aiming at the police. So, um, yeah. We're here purely no violence just to protest about the way our statues are being desecrated these protests were violent um we cover a lot of events like this in central london and that's probably the most violent one i've been to certainly in recent years and i think the arrest figures support that as well more than 100 people arrested i think it was 113 people 23 police officers were injured at the end of the day, what happened here, I think, was quite transparent. And I think it was an attempt to provoke conflict and violence, either with Black Lives Matter protesters or with the police. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, regardless of my opinion on things, as a journalist, you know, you have to stand there and just nod and let people speak uh, and share their opinion. Um, but what you say there about we're here to, you know, peacefully protest, we are just one, we are together. Um, it was hard, to, try, to be honest, it was kind of hard for me not to laugh because that was 15 minutes after we both got assaulted um, and they were when they were clearly charging at police officers. Both you and I, we've gone to the Black Lives Matter protest and everyone was wearing masks, they were giving gel away, there was social distancing being put in place and none of those people there wearing masks on Saturday. I mean few of them, but a lot of them were not, and they were not covered. Um. This has nothing to do with colour, creed, anything. 
It's purely that. This has turned into a slavery issue from some bloke dying by a corrupt uh, policeman. Um, I didn't see any colour. I see a man die by a corrupt policeman. They're very definitely making it about race. They're countering anti-racism protests. So if you're if you're anti anti-racist, I mean, what does that make you? Yeah, exactly. And and my issue here is the whole argument of I don't see color when he talks about George Floyd. And I think what really annoys me is that they use color and the different and, and race as like a way to say none of that is real. I don't see color. And that's the thing, it's like the argument that they don't see color, but actually they, they do and they are being color blind there. Whereas actually this is where the core of the problem starts. If you don't see color, therefore that's somehow an act of racism because you need to see it to be able to tackle it. Um, and yeah, they clearly have made it about color because they are talking about people of color without any of them being there, talking about the others and they haven't really heard what they have to say. Yeah, when you're um, listening to them chanting things like we want our country back um the way that they were the way they were responding to like um there were some leftover black lives matter signs they were like ripping up i think it's pretty obvious from the way that they're behaving um you know what their actual viewpoint on these things is um but yeah. yeah you're right and i think the, the whole thing of like we are here to defend the statues because the police haven't done anything that's that's also absolutely ridiculous it's kind of what who are you are you guys knights are you some sort of <laughs> leagues defending the statues like you know it's kind of like the argument of what donald trump says as well like uh make america great again or like we're taking back control of our country and i don't want this to be about brexit at all but like it's kind of the same thing that we used to hear do you remember back mm -hmm. you know a couple of years ago at the at the brexit pro brexit protest and it's pretty scary I do think that, I'm sorry, but I just kind of want to bring it in. I just think it's extremely disrespectful the way he spoke about George Floyd, to c c calling him a bloke, regardless of someone's colour. I just think you shouldn't talk about a dead person and, and, and use the word bloke. And that kind of really annoyed me there mm. when he said that. I think, yeah, I think that was, that was, that was pretty disrespectful. I just wanted to put it out there, that's all. I'm here today, right, to support, support the English army, you know what I mean? What's happening, right? I don't agree with it, mate. Statues, it fucking, it's all over, mate. Yeah, the racism's coming back, mate, because of the fucking BH men. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what he's saying there. I mean, I was just going to say, to this day, it's been a couple of days now, I still don't understand what he's saying. A lot of the crowd, you mentioned it already, a lot of the crowd were drinking from like 10 a.m., singing football songs, climbing traffic lights. It was basically like, it was basically like the Euros had actually kicked off, you know. It was like, it was like England football fan behaviour. I remember shooting the crowd and, and he just stood in front of my camera and was giving me the finger. Um, he clearly just wanted to get some attention and this is when you turn around and be like, hey, do you want to speak to us? But they could have all been chanting... It's coming home, it's coming home, football is coming home. It would have been exactly the same sort of atmosphere. None of the arguments, in my opinion, were making any sense. And like, clearly, Jamie there is not making any sense whatsoever. You know, there, there are a lot of people out there with, with disgusting views, right, on Saturday. Um, yeah. out, out to provide maximum respect to Churchill, but then, you, you know, I saw someone doing a Nazi salute at the base of the Churchill statue. And I mean, it, like, the irony there, it's so... It's so it's so like black and white, like how ridiculous their their entire message is that you I, you know it's difficult to even formulate the words to to take the piss out of them. Um, I guess what I find reassuring is that they're a very very small minority, and having lost a lot of their power, th this is basically their way to stay relevant, and it's to go and cause a load of tr load of trouble in central London because because there's no there's basically no space for them in society.